want to welcome you and thank you for joining us, the Land Conservancy, today. And we want to welcome and thank California Senator Ben Allen of the 26th District um, and his team for joining us today. Thank you, Senator Allen. I want to welcome City of Rancho Palos Verdes Mayor Dave Bradley, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Barbara Ferraro, who is on her way, and Councilman Eric Alegria, and son, thank you for coming. And we welcome City of Rolling Hills Mayor Pro Tem Patrick Wilson, and Councilwoman Leah Mersh, and uh, City Manager Elaine Jane. And I thank uh, each of you here in attendance, and I look around and I clearly recognize how each of you, um, through your tremendous commitment and generosity, are really the reason that the natural lands on the peninsula are now preserved forever. And how each of you have enabled the Conservancy to engage communities of all ages in the restoration and appreciation of our open space. I want to recognize our founder, Bill Ayler, and co-founder, Barbara Ayler. And our board members, uh, please raise your hand, um, Land Conservancy board members. And the chairs of our Go Wild for the Peninsula cam uh, Campaign Committee, Chris and Steve Tite. And our volunteers who made this event happen and our staff, please raise your hands as well. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> and a wild thank you to generous supporters with us today. And I acknowledge also the many people who came before today um, who have allowed us to continue this legacy. Arthur and Janine Hadley, who are no longer with us, established the first endowment for the Land Conservancy. And their gift has inspired many other people, including Don and Martha Tuffley, um, Alan and Dottie Lay, who Alan's here today, um, and the next generation of the Hadley family. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, Virginia Socoria, we're so pleased you're here. Um, Becky Cool, and woo, Jackie Glass, and Noel Park, um, who's here today as well and many others who I could go on naming who generously given to the endowment as well as the more recent creation of the new wildlife corridor. I'm excited to hear the Senator's announcement, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> I believe um, that we are here in this honorable position to have the Senator's presence and support today because of the 35 year history of successful work that the Land Conservancy has accomplished through our strong partnerships with Peninsula cities, including Rancho Palos Verdes, uh, Rolling Hills and Rolling Hills Estates and others, and the strong support from the community and generous philanthropists and leaders such as each of you here. It's a great pleasure to be with you today for a moment in history that is very important to the Land Conservancy. And now it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce Senator Ben Allen. Wow, thank you so much. It's such a, such a beautiful, beautiful evening. What an incredible place. Uh, and I'm, I'm just so glad to be here with you all tonight. And um, obviously, uh, this is a, it's a special, special moment that we're, that we're going to be celebrating together. Uh, I'm so uh, honored to represent this community, the whole Palos Verdes Peninsula up in Sacramento in our state senate, uh, along with the whole coastal South Bay up to the west side and over uh, through to Hollywood. So it's a big district, a million people in our district. Uh, and, um, but I think most of you know how near and dear environmental uh, protection has been to my, uh, to my heart. I, I serve as chairman of the Senate Environmental Quality Committee and also our environmental caucus. And uh, I think back so fondly uh, of the, the, the times I spent with my dad hiking in the Santa Monica Mountains uh, and also the, the South Downs, which are the portion of, of Southern England in Sussex where he grew up uh, when I would go spend summers with my grandparents and him out there. And, uh, it's such an important part of my childhood, and, and, and we would go up hiking the hills with friends, and it just became a, a wonderful bonding experience for, for me uh, with my father and, and you know, colleagues of his and friends of mine, getting out into the hills, even though I was growing up in a city, getting up into open space and wildlands and getting a, a sense of the wonder and the excitement uh, and the spirituality of this open space that we have here in Los Angeles. It's such an important part of, of being uh, Californian. And so... Uh, it's one of the reasons why, when uh, the Conservancy's application showed up on my on my desk, I got I got really excited because it kind of connected to me in a way uh, as I thought about how this project could help similar young young, young boys and girls you know, going up with their parents and, and getting to know this land and getting to appreciate it all the more and, and, and all the work that you do here on the peninsula to ensure that there's uh, a, 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 such a well protected open space uh, that we're educating the next generation about environmental stewardship. 
and about uh, uh, the, the health and recreational opportunities that are up here and also about the how the habitat protection. Uh, let, let me just mention a couple little um, highlights of our, of our environmental efforts this year. Obviously, uh, a very important package of climate bills that passed this year that will continue to put California at the head of the, uh, of the, the global fight against climate change and a lot of budgetary priority in that space as well to help with the transition to uh, greener energy. Uh, we also were able to get SB 54, my big plastics bill across the finish line that we were just talking about back there. I'm so proud of. It's a bill that we did. Ultimately, was a was a negotiated deal. We were able to strike, uh, you know, with both the environmental community, local government, and also uh, the Chamber of Commerce to finally put plastics producers and distributors give them responsibility for the end use of their of the products that they continue to push out. Uh, uh, you know, into our market. And it was something that actually local government helped to spearhead in the end of the day, because local government is left holding the bag with waste. Uh, I think you know, we got a lot of city council members here uh, who are part of this effort. I just want to thank them. You know, LA, for example, city of Los Angeles used to get about $5 million a year from recycling material that they would send off overseas. And now they're losing a million dollars a year ever since the Chinese said that they don't want our, our recycling material anymore because it was so contaminated. It's not really recyclable. And so we're finally going to, going to, put some coherence and some cohesion into the system so as to, by, by, by making the producers responsible for the, the recyclability, the true recyclability of their products. Closer to home, we were able to get SB 1122 passed, which expands the territory of the San Gabriel and Lower Los Angeles Rivers Conservancy to include the entire Dominguez uh, Channel watershed and Santa Catalina, Catalina Island. So it includes all the South Bay cities from basically around the southern portion of Manhattan Beach all the way down to the peninsula. And this is, going to be, this is very important because these official state, obviously the Land Conservancy here is a very important conservancy and we're going to continue to support your efforts. This will provide an additional avenue for financial support for your efforts. Uh, that that when, when money goes, oftentimes money, land money goes through the official state conservancies. And if you're not in the conservancy territory, you're not eligible for that money and you have to go through the Wildlife Conservation Board and it's a much more complicated process. Now by expanding the territory, of that conservancy, we're going to be able to get more state money directly for land preservation and conservation efforts right here on the on the hill. And I'm so excited about that too. You know, we've been all working very hard on this whole 30 by 30 concept. Uh, this is you know the idea that we'd be protecting 30 percent of our state's lands and coastal waters by 2030. And this is a, a, an important initiative, and I mean, it ultimately uh, is, is premised on the idea that we know the science is so clear that conservation is a must if we're going to be able to be successful facing down our changing climate and preserving a livable planet. And it's, it's ultimately conservancies like yours that have been playing such an integral role in, in safeguarding and restoring unique natural environments. Uh, and I, I just firmly believe that if, if we're going to achieve our statewide goals, we have to, we have to double down on empowering and supporting efforts at the local level. And, and that's so abundantly clear when we look at the work being done here in our own backyard at the PV uh, Peninsula Land Conservancy and, and, and the recent announcement for the Go Wild, uh, Go Wild for the Peninsula campaign. So, so uh, as part of that effort, I'm so excited to announce, uh, and, and this of course is you know very much uh, thanks to, to so many people. Let's start with uh, the taxpayers of the state of California. I mean, you know, Politicians love giving out taxpayer money, uh, but it, it, we did have a we did have an extraordinarily uh, a strong budget last year, not as strong this year, uh, and so you know the, the market is definitely down. But uh, there was a certain amount of money set aside for worthy projects up and down the state uh, that uh, legislators identified in cooperation with local organizations like yours. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just so proud that, that to announce today that we've been able to secure a $5 million grant from the state to help the conservancy with their goals. So with this grant, the conservancy is going to be able to continue uh, its work on, on habitat restoration, promoting the recovery of endangered species, including the blue butterfly here on the peninsula. Uh, you know, also, this is going to help with our wildfire efforts. Uh, you know, we know that we're, we're no longer, unfortunately, worried about if the next wildfire is going to pose threat to our communities. We, it's really a question of when, planning for when. And so one of the other things that these funds are going to help us do is, is uh, you know, support the, both support this exceptional uh, piece of land and the communities that surround it, but take some real action 
uh, combating the threat of wildfires here on the peninsula by reducing the invasive plants that oftentimes serve as the perfect fuel for a raging fire, replacing them with native drought resistant alternatives that are uh, that, that are much better suited to the land and the wildfire cycles here. So these are this actions like this are going to be uh, such a, a direct contribution to our 30 30 30 by 30 initiative. I'm just so excited to see all the good work that comes uh, that, that will, that's going to come from the investment by our state. And my only ask of you is that you keep inviting me down to, to see the work uh, that you do uh, so that I can I can um, I just get, kind of keep keep my eye on, on all the great work that happens here and, and, and take my own son, who's now just about to turn four, on, uh, on some hikes up in here, uh, up into the canyons. So uh, this is, it's just, it's such a joy to be here with you. And I just want to personally thank all of you because I know that when you know, something that just shows up on my desk looking as a strong application like yours uh, is the product of years and years of work. The name, the good name that this conservancy had. So you know, lots of applications come in and, we, and then of course we have to run them up the flagpole with various people in the administration and the Department of Finance. This conservancy is well respected. It's known for its good work. And I also know that it's, it's ultimately born on the backs of all of the activism, the leadership, the fundraising, uh, the volunteer hours, uh, the great staff that have made this conservancy so effective over so many years. And it's because of the dedicated decades of service that you've all put into this organization and those that came before us uh, that we, we get to this moment here today where we're, we're, we're doubling down on our commitment to ensuring preservation uh, and preservation of, of land uh, for, for, for many, many more generations to come. So thank you, Adrian. Thank you to the Conservancy. Thank you for being here tonight. And thank you for all your great work on behalf of our environment. And here's a check. Now this is actually um, not really cashable, but you know, there's, there's you know, a lot of politicians getting in trouble these days, so I, I uh, don't want you to cash this. But nevertheless, congratulations, and, and uh, let's get to work. Wow, I, um, this is really momentous, and it's really a win for everyone, um, and I'm speaking um, on the peninsula. I mean, thank you to the senator for being such a champion of environmental causes as all, in all the ways that you mentioned, but a particular and champion of our request for support. Uh, we feel like you really brought home this win for the peninsula and for the South Bay and, and everyone who lives here who gets to enjoy the benefits of where this funds are, these funds are going, and the wildlife, of course, too. Uh, we invite you and your son to come back. We have lots of planting to do and <laughs> weeds to pull. <laughs> I'll bring my three-year-old as well, so we'll have a good time. So thank you very, very much. And, um, and, and really, I think this is success is made because of those city partnerships as well. And in particular, I want to thank the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, who are our partners in acquiring and restoring this open space and this new wildlife corridor that this funding will go to support. So um, thank you. And with that, I would love to introduce um, Mayor David Bradley to come and provide some remarks of thanks. Thank you, Adrian. Um, I want to thank ben Allen, uh, uh, Senator Ben Allen once again for this uh, helping shepherd this great uh, grant uh, through the system for us and getting uh, an additional $5 million for the Conservancy uh, and really help us take this to the next level and really kick off going wild. Um, so, you know, it wasn't too long ago that we were back here um, celebrating the acquisition of the 96 acres. Um, as you look around this beautiful property, you know, it, it can't be more uh, picturesque. And the ability for us to preserve this forever um, is just, as a kid growing up here, I never thought I'd be standing here. So, I mean, I grew up in Palos Verdes. I've hiked these hills for the last 50 years. Um, and the idea that we can continue to conserve and preserve this area is so special to be able to do it. And under the leadership of Senator Allen um, and others in the state legislature, uh, you know, this is really being made a reality. Uh, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes could not be happier to uh, partner with the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy to help manage this area um, and all of our preserve. Um, we now have up to 1,500 acres under preserve. So for 
a city our size, this is just unheard of that we are able to do that. Um, so you look out on this beautiful view um, and you just have to say, wow. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Jim York for opening up his uh, uh, Terrace Garden this evening. Uh, you know, Jim has been an amazing partner in working with both the Conservancy as well as uh, the city um, in the acquisition of some of the uh, last open spaces within the city. Um, and, and, and now we have uh, put that into the 1,500 acres. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight. And uh, for those of you that are outside of the city, welcome to the city. And uh, with that, I'd just like to say, go wild. Thank you very much. Um, and as, as mentioned, too, we, we look forward to the work that will be done on this property. But I want to special, um, especially highlight, I would say, the work that um, our neighboring city of Rolling Hills has done and their leadership in um, not only within their city trying to understand how to control threats of wildfire on private properties throughout the city of Rolling Hills, uh, but has also taken the investment to remove invasive plants um, that benefit the neighboring city of Rancho Palos Verdes here in the PV Nature Preserve that safeguards um, the community. And so um, if uh, Mayor Pro Tem Pat Wilson would like to speak about that and any other of their environmental initiatives, um, please welcome Pat Wilson. Thank you. And uh, thank everyone for being here. It's such a, I really think it's a lovely day. It's better than a month ago, that's for sure. So uh, um, I'd like to, first of all, we don't get, in Rolling Hills, we don't get recognition for a lot of things that happen outside our city. So it's very, very pleasing to be uh, recognized for what we have done to try to help the peninsula. And, and part of that is uh, wildfire um, mitigation or, or fire fuel uh, reduction. And what we've done over the last several years is partner with the Conservancy to reduce the fire fuel outside the city, but right on our border. And we have, uh, uh, the city of Rolling Hills has quite a, a, a long border with Rancho Palos Verdes at the Conservancy. As a matter of fact, my house is right on that border, so I, uh, I don't get the direct benefit of the fire fuel reduction, but many residents in our city and the city as a whole does get that. So it's great to have that connection. It's great to have the cooperation with uh, Rancho Palos Verdes and the Conservancy. And it's just a great feeling to have, the, um, have them have our back, I guess, because when a fire starts, it does start downhill from us and comes uphill. So. The Conservancy has spent a lot of time and effort mowing the, uh, the mustard grass, which looks beautiful for beautiful for about one month out of the year, and then it's just such a fire hazard for the rest. And plus the, uh, the non-native acacia trees that are more explosive, more like a Roman candle, really, than an ornamental tree. So I um, really appreciate that. And, um, you know, besides having the border with the uh, Ranch of Palos Verdes, there's also personal connections. I, many of us on the penis peninsula know each other from different aspects in our lives. and. Uh, you know, I know uh, many members of the, the city council at the um, with Rancho Palos Verdes. As a matter of fact, I've known Dave Bradley for quite quite a long time now. Our days go back to, uh, I think, AYSO soccer, where you were a referee, and uh, you made that bad call in the championship game. <laughs> so somehow that stands out. But, it, you know, but I got beyond that. It's okay. You know, we, 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 we cooperate now, and uh, we do have a great relationship. Uh, but... Uh, Again, thank you for the recognition. We've spent, our city has spent over $300,000 in the fire fuel reduction. And uh, we hope it doesn't go on at that rate. We hope the, the reduction uh, tapers off over time because of the uh, continuing maintenance. But we're very pleased that we're able to participate in this process. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, and uh, so now I'd like to uh, channel the Land Conservancy's board president, Rob Kautz, who couldn't be here today, but wanted to send some remarks just to um, convey the message of our Go Wild campaign. Um, and he says, hello everyone, I must assure you that if it not for attending an out of town wedding, I would not miss this historic occasion on our journey across generations to preserve and restore the natural environment of the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Many of you have heard this before, but right now we're in a critical period in which we need broad support in order to achieve three primary goals for restoration of the preserve. One, remove invasive plants to reduce fire risk. 
Two, replace them with a naturally drought tolerant Palos Verdes ecosystem in this wildlife corridor, as well as in public and private landscapes across the peninsula. And three, protect the beauty of nature on these coastal lands forever. The acquisition of this wildlife corridor completes 35 year journey in partnership between the city of Rancho Palos Verdes and the Land Conservancy to create the 1500 Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. But now we must complete these three restoration goals, and that will require broad partnership between all levels of government, business, foundations, and residents. So I invite you to go wild with us. We need everyone's help, big or small, so please give a cheer for me to go wild for the peninsula. I hope you heard that in New York, yes. And this generous state funding support and the 30 million Go Wild initiative will forever change this landscape for the better. But it's important to know that while significant, it doesn't provide for all the work that needs to be done to restore these ecosystems. This is a major investment, and thank you to the Senator. And we are so thankful for you championing this important priority that will benefit all humans and wildlife. Um, and I just want to conclude the program with one closing thought. And I strongly believe in the saying that uh, those who are happiest are those who do the most for others. And I can see clearly that this is a truly happy group. <laughs> you do most for everyone. And Senator, I hope you are the happiest. You must be the happiest. You do. Thank you so much for all that you've done for your constituents here in the South Bay and Peninsula. How do you feel about the announcement that uh, Senator Allen just made? I feel wild. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's outstanding. I mean, whenever we can work with the state of California and our uh, representatives in Sacramento for a win-win and help the city and help bring home additional conservation dollars to help the peninsula maintain our 1,500 acres of open space, it's just a win-win. And we're really excited for the for the leadership of uh, Senator Allen and uh, and as we go um, and conserve this land forever. It, it, it can't be understated how important this is. Uh, Councilman Allegria. Oh, well, you said it, Mayor, and I think if you just turn the camera and you look at the view next to us and you think about uh, the current generation and the generations ahead, you can't feel anything but just appreciation for the Senator's efforts and the $5 million that we're going to be the recipients of uh, in partnership with the Land Conservancy and the work that's going to be done here. So big thank you to the Senator and a big thank you to the Land Conservancy as well tonight. This is Steve and Chris Tight, who are the co-chairs of the Go Wild for the Peninsula campaign. And we're just asking how you feel about the $5 million donation uh, through Senator Allen. I think it was really personal for the Senator to talk about the, the hiking he did as a child and to you could tell the, his appreciation for preserving land, not only for uh, the humans, but for the species that are endangered. And a $5 million gift is a huge commitment from the state, and we're very grateful to the senator. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic gift to the campaign. We know we still have a lot to do with the community, and we look forward to uh, our uh, campaign as it now launches at a more resident level. But from the state, that $5 million is such a gift. And I, I give credit to the Conservancy staff for um, putting together such a compelling application to be awarded it. And I think Senator Allen was right on in his comments that mm -hmm. this is exactly in line with the 30 slash 30 that the government and the, the state wants to pursue. And this is a fantastic opportunity for us. Yeah. Oh, I think it's a great, unexpected in my part anyway, a start to this whole program. You know, we, we worried about how do you get enough funds to buy the property. And we got through that, and it's just the beginning of what you need to do to the, the 96 acres to make it uh, uh, to recover, and that's a big cost. And here's a $5 million gift from the, from the state to make that happen, and that's great. And he certainly clearly uh, believes in what he's doing there in terms of helping us uh, get that. So, great. Well, I'm so excited to you know, be a part of this and have been in the position where I you know, was able to help and the stars aligned really nicely. Obviously, we had a good state budget this year, uh, but we also had such a great proposal from the, from, the, from the Conservancy. And there's been so many great people been working on trying to preserve this land for a long time, and this money's going to help uh, on, on habitat restoration. It's going to help with wildfire resiliency. 
uh, and help the operations of the of the of the conservancy. And so it's um, I listen as someone who you know as a kid benefited from previous generations of you know activists and volunteers who helped to preserve open space in the hills above my hometown in Santa Monica. I, I just know that this is going to make such a difference for. You know, generations of, of kids growing up in and near and around the peninsula in this area. And um, just excited to have been in a position where I was able to help. And you were saying um, in your remarks about the 30 by 30, how this is helping do, you know, uh, accomplish that goal? Yeah, so 30 by 30 is a global initiative. It's trying, basically saying that we, sh we need to take a proactive approach to try to set aside 30% of, of lands for, for nature, for preservation, for habitat. Uh, you know, if you look at the pace of development and the, you know, the, the as a species, we are we're, we're we're making it harder and harder for our Earth to breathe and for it to be habitable, on the long term. And so we need to be much more proactive about setting aside land for preservation uh, that that will provide us with the oxygen, the lungs, uh, but also the recreational opportunities and the the access to nature that we know makes such a big difference for people's mental health and physical health. It's, it's a really important thing to do, and this is this is our little way to be a part of that global initiative. It's a it's an effort happening all over the world, uh, as as human beings are coming together and saying, "Hey, wait a minute, we really have to start treating our Earth a little bit better." And one of the things we need to do is set aside land for preservation. Would you mind saying "Go wild for the peninsula"? Yeah, go wild for the peninsula. I'm thrilled because it's it's that much more money and it's the state coming forward with our money to do this but he was the vehicle and he was quite wonderful in spearheading that. We've been very fortunate with everyone that we've, we've spoken to and of course Adrian and the entire staff has worked absolute miracles. We know that we supported it initially but you know, that just helped to grow the funds that we have. And we really do hope that everyone can donate to this because it is to take care of the invasive plants and to do the restoration, which is a very long and costly project. So give if you can, and we appreciate it greatly. Thank you.